Right, hi everyone. <laughs> it's nice to see so many people here. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Jessica Barron, and I am from the Riley Center for Science, Technology, and Values at the University of Notre Dame. We call ourselves a place where science, technology, and society meet. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about what I do and, and how we can bring that to the community. The mission of the Riley Center is to explore conceptual, ethical, and uh, policy issues in science and technology, the places where science and society meet. And our purpose is to promote the advancement of science and technology for the common good. Okay. We do that in a number of different ways. We do that through education, we do that through research, and we do that through outreach. And outreach is my part of this. This is the reason that I get up every morning and get excited to go to work so that I can geek out on science all day long. I'm pretty lucky to have the job that I do. So, Usually when people do science outreach, it's a unidirectional thing. Scientists and experts go and they talk to society because they're the scientists and experts and they sort of foist it upon you and you're supposed to learn it. I think the best method of doing science outreach is to really have us going both ways, right? So science, so society talks back to science. So it's, um, we, last year, at the end of last year, we started our first list of emerging ethical dilemmas and policy issues in science and technology. Got a lot of attention on the internet and on the radio. Did an interview on NPR. You don't have to uh, read all of it in 15 seconds. It's on the internet. Um, but there's probably some science on here that you, you don't know is going on. And I think it's really important that we know what's happening, what kind of science is happening in our society, so we can talk about whether we think it's appropriate. We let people vote on our list, and voting is actually still open, so if you want to go to the URL at the, at the bottom of the page, you can do that. Um, it seems to me, it seems to us from the voting, that adaptation to climate change is really what's on people's mind right now. And no wonder, this used to be a lake, and those used to be fish. Um, like we're having a conference actually at Notre Dame to talk about climate change, and you're all invited. You can find that information on the website. We'll be live tweeting it as well. Um, but we really need to talk about how we're going to cope with change and how we're going to adapt to it. Big data is also something that's on people's minds, privacy issues. I don't think we think enough about when we click on the internet or when we buy something on the internet or when we buy something in the store with our store card, how much information is getting collected about us. This is my nerdy slide. Um, at the, uh, his name is Tyrannus, and he is a British-built drone, and he is built to make his own decisions about when and where to strike. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think if we're going to build a robot to think and attack, we should maybe talk about that first. Human enhancements, another thing. These are three different kinds of exoskeletons currently being developed, two for the military, one for civilian use. And these, again, we have a weapons ethics program at the Riley Center, and we talk a lot about how to go to war, and if we make war easier, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I was really bitter that 3D printing, which I put on the list, uh, didn't, didn't make it quite to the top. But for $2,000, you can own a MakerBot, which supplies you with an inexhaustible supply of awesome. So I think that's a great deal for $2,000. Of course, the flip side of that is that you can print registers for guns and things that maybe we don't want everyone printing at home. So ethics and policy should be a public conversation. And my part of this is that I should be out in the community talking with you. And right now, yes, I'm talking at you. But we should be talking to each other. I should be talking with you. I think a great way to do this is a science cafe. You may or may not have heard of a science cafe. They go on all over the world. They're a really fun way to learn more about science. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, and that's what I really want to talk to you about. So they're a grassroots effort, and they get science to the public, but they really allow you to talk back with scientists. They pick interesting topics or controversial topics, things that people are interested in, and they have it in an informal and a friendly place so people feel like they can ask questions and really get some dialogue going. So these happen all over the world. These happen in other towns and cities. There's a list up there. Some of them actually happen in cafes or real science cafe. My personal favorite ones are the ones that happen in bars. Any of you with a beer in the audience probably know that science and beer go really well together. So I would like to propose to you a South Bend science cafe, and I hope that anyone in the audience who is interested in this will talk to me about it tonight, because there is no operational science cafe right now in South Bend or within 30 miles of us. And there really should be. We're smart people. So a successful science cafe requires a lot of different things, and it doesn't require me going back to my office at Notre Dame and putting the whole thing together myself and then foisting it upon you. It requires all of these things up here, but mostly your involvement from the very beginning. So I know that I'm talking about something interesting and people will come and that we'll all help each other out. So here's the contact information for the Riley Center. If you want to follow our uh, live tweeting from our climate conference or attend it, there it is. 
And then finally, my contact information will pop up in a second, and I really sincerely hope that you will talk to me tonight if you're interested in making a science cafe in South Bend, and not necessarily about emerging ethical dilemmas and policy issues, but anything that you're interested in, anything that you hear tonight. Thank you.